for another one day and then you are ready to go so i said okay this at least be more, it takes me like three days to get everything done and i went for tapolin pond so that is how i okay so when you're, you're uh, for your first visit here yeah to get look at the land that's when you began everything that's when i began everything oh, okay. I, I came to ghana on the 12th of may 2021 13th i came to see the owner we agreed 14th i made payments, payments. and then 15th excavator is on the line wow <laughs> that's nice I, I like i like the enthusiasm about sure. the whole thing yeah if you have something to just do it there's no reason for delays yeah. introducing apex 10 your fertilizer booster Purely organic from the earth to the earth, now available in Ghana. Apex 10 Fertilizer Booster, best for plant restoration, reviving aged and withered plants, producing healthy and abundant fruits, and easy to apply. A boom to farmers and beyond, making farming sexy again. Apex 10 Fertilizer Booster is a game changer with many branches. Employment to enable you to feed yourself. If you must get it right, get Apex 10 Fertilizer a booster, no toxins, sexy, absolutely organic, easy to apply, and super healthy. For more information, call 0552 505 723 or plus 1609 227 8043. Apex 10 from the earth to the earth, making farming sexy again. Apex 10, join the movement now. So yeah, uh, I'm currently here with uh, Michael, that he actually visit the KMA farms. Um, I know we've, we've had previous discussions back and forth on social media, right. but today is the first time that we've actually seen you right. for us to uh, have a conversation around that fish farm. So before that, can you introduce yourself to my viewers? All right. Okay. My name is Michael Apia Adams. Yeah, but my catfish uh, name is KMA Catfish Farming. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like, um, what what basically do you do that finally decided to come into catfish farming? Yeah. Actually, I don't live uh, here in Ghana. I live in the Netherlands. So I plan to do something back home, and I was like, what is right for me to invest? You know. So I went through YouTube channels, and I had a chance of watching your. Videos. previous videos and you know i was like wow this business is quite lucrative so i have to mm. get myself involved so that is how i get myself involved okay. Okay. yeah okay. so when we come to come to catfish yeah like in the netherlands is that you've been there throughout your life or yeah how? i i actually i'm in netherlands for seven years now but i was living in greece for eight and a half years yeah so wow. <laughs> so totally my 16 year going to 17 years in europe, in europe. Totally, yeah okay you went there for schooling or for work yeah i went there for work i didn't go there for school actually initially i went because of football, you know. football. oh so you play football yeah but you know all this kind of things is something that if you go by yourself it's not easy yeah it's not easy you may seem that it's easy yeah, I know because football in Ghana, honestly, like uh, probably some 16 years ago, even till now, it's all about money. It's who about you money. Know, I, have tried I, I have tried here. I have tried here. I I have trained with the Okoro United. I have trained oh, with nice. the uh, Rainbow Stars. There was a team. I don't know now if it's still, it's still like <laughs> Rainbow Stars. 
and then I train with the there is I think Winiba or Blacks or so. Yeah, there is one team. So yeah, we we'll train at Accra Academy Park. Nice, you know? yeah. nice, nice, nice. And you know the the bureaucracy and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The I, it's quite brown out envelopes that comes and. Yeah, you maybe they will tell you point blank that you are very good, you know, but that alone cannot be good. That's what I said, okay, let me go outside the country and I'll move in there also. If you go without any one bringing you the That's another problem. That's another problem. So uh, you need to channel your way of, of how to survive. And then, uh, so that's how it all started. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, Ghana the actual talents don't get a chance to play football. Sure. That's why the Black Star are not succeeding. That's because, true. I mean, see our recent performance and stuff. Of course. We bring foreign players and all of that. But at least that's a conversation for a different oh, Right. Yeah, that's, that's, true. Different. that's true. So, um, now you said you wanted to do something back home. You decided to think of what to invest in. Sure. But initially, what was the plan before possibly? Yeah, I've see. been doing uh, this uh, buy and sell, you know, exporting things, importing things into the country. It wasn't helping because I have my reason. I'm not going to spoil somebody's uh, business. business. I have yeah. my reason because look, we're going to export the thing. The buyer there has taken his money. Okay? The ship, the container they have taken their yeah. money. Yeah. The agent here, this is where the game starts. <laughs> you know? This is where the game starts. They will tell you all sorts of things and they will take a huge chunk of money from you. From you yeah. And when you bring the thing to the market, they are like, oh, they want to buy it cheap, you know? They will come the way they will play with you and this. So I look at them and I say, no, I'm not going to work for them to be rich whilst I struggle. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. I make huge losses. You understand? Yeah. So why wouldn't I invest my money into agriculture? So like this? To yeah. help me. Even if this it doesn't succeed, the land is there. You can use for something. Sure. Else. But so I'll, show, I'll, show, I'll show you guys, like, uh, there's a game video at least. The whole farmland he has and how they set up this as well. Um, so okay, so then you decided to after watching the videos. So which particular video got you interested in catfish? Well, you did one video with a guy at East Lego, you know, yeah. and from that perspective, the guy was like he hate agriculture, you know. So yeah, initially, he, yeah, he hate yeah. agriculture, but I don't know how come he chanced upon <laughs> that and he got himself into with business and you know, it wow. energized me and I said come on yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me rush come on so I got my ticket and then uh, May last year I came down and okay. I got this now actually I told my nephew and uh, my family to for some lunch when they told me that they've got one you and I, yeah and I have to come down so we started everything May last year we bought the land it wasn't like this it was bushy with grass and, and stuff yeah so okay. a lot of work has gone into it sure sure huge chance of money yeah. <laughs> yeah. so if you know what the video is talking about i'll link it uh, in the video so you, you check it out and you see and i must say from that video too the guy has advanced now he's on a large scale he even got an interview from i think cnn also oh that's yeah. great so like for now he's actually like that's great. A big deal now, like oh, as that's, a doing yeah. last skill. That's great. Big shout out to Latman. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's nice. So about acquiring the land, you said you had family around who assisted. Right. Because I know normally those who are outside who are watching that. Some of most of them are also interested in getting land to start like sure. as you did. Yeah. There have been challenges. Like can you take us through how you go, you were able to access it? Well uh, there are challenges, you know, there are challenges with the land because you know in Africa. The land is not controlled by the government. Yeah, you know, individuals. individuals. So, and it's uh, families. Yeah, so yeah. if one family comes up, and then they sell the land, and later that family, let's say the head died, and another family comes, then <laughs> the person to everything bring is like yeah, yeah. recycling. Yeah. So for me, I was fortunate. You know, I have uh, relatives here in this place, yeah. and then uh, my nephew is here. So I spoke to them and. They said okay. So I was there within a week. They told me that uh, they have a land, and I came down. So when I came, uh, we went right away. I came, I think, 12 May. Yeah, 12 May last year, 2021. I came, and then uh, 
13th we came to see the, the, place. the place and then uh, I said okay I like it so 14th I made payment I brought excavator and everything began. Yeah, the land, the land. yeah. <laughs> that's nice. That's yeah. nice. So, um, so now you're into uh, catfish now. Sure. I want to know what determined the choice of pond you use. Whether to go for the uh, tapolin, yeah. like the various types of ponds that you have. Sure. Why do you go for the tapolins? Okay, I went for the tapolin because you know when I was coming, I was having like two and a half months to do everything and return back. Okay, we did a duration they yeah. give you to stay. Okay, two and a half months to do everything. So I was like, if I do concrete uh, pond, I was like, no, this thing you need at least three weeks for treatment to take time. So no, this is not the first option for me. So I cancelled that out. In a earthen pond, I wasn't that you know sure about it. I wasn't happy with that because I was okay. like, oh okay, you have to go in the water and uh, like this, and I wasn't honest. <laughs> I wasn't. So I looked at the pond and I said, okay, this one. The treatment is when you get it, you wash it with the uh, salt water. Yeah, to make you it understand. More. Yeah, and then you rinse it. You leave it to dry for one day. You pour in water. It sit for another one day, and then you are ready to go. So I said, okay, this at least maximum. It option. takes me like three days to get everything done. And I went for tapolin pond. So that is how I. Okay. So when you your for your first visit here, yeah, to get look at the land, that's when you began everything. That's when I began everything. Oh, okay. I, I came to Ghana on the 12th of May, 2021. 13th, I came to see the owner. We agreed. 14th, I made payments. payments. And then 15th excavator is on the land. Wow, <laughs> that's nice. I, I like I like the enthusiasm about sure. the whole thing. Yeah. If you have something to just do, it, there's no reason for delays. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get you, I get you. and you know watching that video you did with Latman also it's uh, I did a lot of research about you it. know about it and here in Ghana there isn't much people on YouTube that you can or oh, isn't much about research you know everybody's like hiding hiding the information yeah, exactly. I that's, mean, that's what that is, that is, that is people sick. have the information they will let you pay before they will give them yeah out. It's, it's quite disappointing yeah. so I, I I have a lot of people that I followed from Nigeria so I seek yeah. advice Nigeria from is them. like one of the main places sure. for catfish yeah. so I seek advice and they told me like this so initially I stopped like uh, 6,000, okay. you know, so I had my ups and downs, you know, because it's a business that all you hear is lucrative, lucrative, but they will not tell you the, the actual details, yeah, about, the it. Actual details <laughs> about it, you know, and if you're not careful, you may lose hope and forget everything. Yeah. So 6,000, the first day, and then the person that I bought the fingerlings and the things from, told me to start with the how they call it uh, two mm instead the of size, yeah, yeah instead of starting size, yeah, yeah instead yeah. of starting the feed with like 0 0.8 or 1.2 to 1.5 he said two mm okay. so <laughs> i gave them two mm and the next day i came they were hanging and the food was oh yeah choking yeah, yeah. on their throat and most of them died died wow you know so i was my nephews and my niece and my cousins, they were like, they thought that, you know, they were looking at me to see how my body reaction, but I was calm, <laughs> you know. It's part, of, it's part of the process. Yeah, I was calm. They thought that I'm going to lose weight, but I was calm. And then I called the guy and said, hey man, you give me wrong prescription with the feet. And he said, oh, okay, I'll give you some supplement to like this, to, yeah, yeah, like this. And I went and bought a 1.2 mm. It, it mixed with the 1.5, they mixed that one. So I bought again and ah, I lost half of my fish, the 6,000. So I have like 3,000, maybe 300 pieces now. Okay. Yeah, so that is good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that I think, uh, well, at the beginning, it, it's unfortunate you have to go through that. Sure, yeah. but I've but learned a lot, honestly. Exactly. I've learned a lot that <laughs> I, I sometimes, you know, people contact me for advice. Yeah, and all yeah. that. that's, that's nice. That's nice. Um, so you will come to details about the full fish farm and the setup now. Sure. So I want to know, what is the challenge of doing business in Ghana? Yeah. So for someone who is from outside, yeah. from that perspective, yeah. how do you see the challenge? The challenge is, is number one, who will look it after you? Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. Is, that is one big problem. You know, because sometimes you are there. You are having 
another problem there because there there are a whole bunch of issues that we go through there. and then they will be calling you now this is what is Today happening this, tomorrow, tomorrow this so it's like you need to at least stay calm have faith you know and believe in the path that you have chosen and then through the the land the acquisition of land that's one of the main yeah it's, it's, it's very very big problem here in Ghana and then the number three is I mean uh, information most of the people hide information instead of sharing yeah. you understand because in uh, Europe like this and I would say Holland precisely like this everything is there the, the doors are open every information if you want to set up a business you call the Clemente or uh, like we say municipal okay. yeah you call like maybe like a like EMA or KMA yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, it's unfortunate here those things don't really yeah they, they call it a Clemente okay. yeah so if you call those uh, people they have offices that they can assist you. yeah you go they will tell you you do this you have to do that you, have to, you get access but here is different so you have to go according to you know exactly. what is here exactly. yeah so that is these problems that we, we face. Yeah. So me, for the land challenges, I know most of you contact me telling me you want land. I'm really working on it. I'm trying to partner with some of these land agencies and stuff who can at least credible ones who can assist and make some of these things smooth for people. Yeah. Because I get those things a lot. Yeah. Especially for those in the diaspora. Yeah. We want land to start. We've, we've seen this your videos here yeah, inspired, but the land is a problem. And unfortunately, I'm not able to help. Some send me emails. I'm not able to reply because I don't have answers to of that. Of course. Yet. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm working on it. Hopefully, I get some of these people, credible people, who can uh, help to make some of these transitions easier. You know, people. the thing is, the thing is, look, uh, Charles. What I would say is, if you are really serious to do something, yeah. you need to calm down yourself. Okay. You understand? Don't sit there and, like I say, oh money. Like you understand? Yeah, you yeah. send people go and do this, go and do that. No. Calm down yourself. And one thing, you know, Ghanaians, we 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 are we feel comfortable in our, you know, high small shift, yeah, yeah. small shift like this. We don't want to explore, we don't want to take risk. You understand? This is who we are. And if you are like this, you don't see progress. You understand? Yeah. You don't see progress. Yeah. Me like this, I'm not doing a full-time job there. In order for me to have time. Yeah. Because I could have before I told you I, I was into exporting or, or yeah. I would say importing, importing yeah. Yeah. yeah I go to Turkey I go to Spain I go to Taiwan okay. to bring things yeah. spare parts security doors yeah. Yeah, yeah I bring all those things down you understand so I'm doing a part-time job there in order for me to when it is time for me to calm down it's easy because I was here last year May yeah you know, I came here I think um, December 2019. Oh no, December 2020. Yeah, because I lost my dad. Oh, sorry. So I have to came for the one week celebration. Celebration, and then at that time my goods from Taiwan has arrived. So I did that, and then I went back 24th of December. So I spent the Christmas there with my family in Holland. Yeah. Okay. And then May 2021, I came back. So if you look at it, it's like five, six months. Five, yeah, I came back, and then September. 2021, I came back again to bury my dad, and then I had opportunity to monitor my farm. I was here doing sorting with my workers. <laughs> yeah, you came, I was inside. Yeah, yeah. Doing sorting myself and everything. I got stung by the catfish. catfish yeah. Yeah. I went back with, you know, saw my dad. <laughs> you understand? And then I am here again. So if you look at this, like five, six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To come and yeah because I want to, I really want to come and you know, stay, have more time with my fishes here or with my investment here. Rather than so with time, definitely you'll finally sure, move? Sure, 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 sure. Okay. That is, that is my plan. The plan. That is my plan. Because, look, when we were living in Ghana, we were like, oh, you could pay me be a fee. Why we don't, we are copa again, why we don't come home? Yeah, because we're yeah, 16 years. Yeah, yeah. We, we went and looked for something and then come home. Now we've gotten what, at least the small that we went, then we are still like, oh, my name is and then we stay there. Sure. So let, let's. So if you have a message for your colleagues in yeah. the diaspora, yeah, what would that be? Yeah, for me, I would tell them that look, take risk, okay. 
take risk. If you don't take risk, you will never succeed. Yeah. The rich people, they have secrets that they will never tell you. Do you understand? Yeah. That is, you have to use depth to succeed. Because if you look at it, only 1% of the, of the rich people, they are only 1%. You understand? Yeah, I mean, and they are the ones, they don't pay tax. You know why? Because they do investment. And look, Ghana here, if you're an investor, they give you like five years uh, tax exemption. So can you, you, because you are doing what? Bringing in bringing money. money. Yeah. You understand? And then we have good debt and bad debt. You understand? When we talk of good debt, this is where you take a loan from the bank and then you invest in something, something that, that brings you generation. money. Exactly. Bad debt is those that you take and then you, you build a house, you buy a car, and then you pay back. Yeah, yeah, and carry more liabilities yeah, that on is yourself. Yes. That is it. Okay. You understand? So for me, I would tell them that they have to take the risk, they have to come home, and then see things themselves. There are so many opportunities, not only in catfish. For me, agriculture per se has a lot of potential. Yeah. And the dynamics are changing. Exactly. Way back, our fathers are doing this. Yeah, the ones uh, used to do them. Come yeah. on. Those things are gone now. Yeah, I watched a video that the farmers did. And I yeah, was laughing. Yeah, I was asking people I was laughing. about their said, perception of our farmers. Sure. Yeah. I said I was laughing. Somebody said, Me, <laughs> going to farm. Except I think one lady. Who was a little bit okay, but the rest, all the men were like, you say, you win best for my got a what? The best tricycle, Come yeah. yeah. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. The, and one thing too, so most of the youth are interested in going outside, going outside, going outside. The, the plan is not necessarily to build something in Ghana, but I understand some of the systems here it doesn't work yeah. basically. Sure. So for those who have their main aims to go outside, what advice would you give them? You know, Charles, before I come to that, let me say this. Look, we all went there and we learned. Yeah. You understand? When we were here, our senior brothers or relatives who have been there, they told us that, oh, stay here, you can make it. It is true. It is true. But when you come there, then you realize that, oh, what they are saying is true. true. Because, look, here in Ghana, we overspend money without thinking. You understand? I've worked here before I traveled. Yeah. When we go to the market like Antamanto, that side I was working, and then we made money. You know that next week when you come, you, you make get again. another money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those ones you made, you, ah, just, you just crush it. <laughs> you understand? You yeah. crush everything, and then Monday you just go empty, and then you start, and then from Tuesday Wednesday you start. Cash cash. Yeah, but what I will say is that look, they have to start little, start little, and then have aim of growing. You understand? Yes. Coming to Europe nowadays is, is kaput. It's like dead. You understand? Because why? Those Syrians, Afghanistans, and those from Eastern Europe, you know, they are off. Yeah, yeah, and job is, you know, it's but fine. If you had the opportunity and then you go, fine. I will not, for me, I will not stop anybody from going, but I will encourage them to, you know, start to do something. You understand? Start to do something. For me, this is what is important for, for them to start something. Because during uh, President Kufo's time, uh, my journey began from that side. You understand? He brought an initiative called Cassava Starch or what something sort of. He made a Cassava Starch with the Ayinsu Starch factory. Also. Okay. Yeah, so at that time, you know, I have played football for some time and nothing was going through. Yeah, so. I went to the village and I told my father that I want to do this uh, program. This before, yeah, they call it before batch. That's how they were calling it. Yeah. So my father looked at me and he said, okay, I said, I want it. He said, okay, the land is there. So I went and I cleared the land and he was surprised that I was able to do it. Meanwhile, I told my friends at the village that they have to get themselves involved. And none of them took part. They were there, I started clearing my land, planting, my cassava started growing, weeding everything. Yeah. And I harvested. I harvested, I had money to start my operation. So, uh, so it's better to start something, something rather than to sit down and say there is only in the country. Because look, the government, you have to be honest, cannot create jobs for everyone. You understand? So if you have a land, if you are access, you have access to a land, it's better to start something. Maybe you can do vegetables, you can do whatever. 
uh, rabbit, snail, cascata. Yeah, yeah, you can get yourself. But this is capital intensive. That's what I'm going to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, thank you for speaking with us. I think the second video, look at the setup, look at the farm in general, plans of expansion and what it does basically. So yeah, we we'll end the first part of the video here. Make sure you click on the red button to subscribe, put the notification on to get regular updates as when I drop a new video, and please drop a thumbs up onto the video. All right, peace out.